Awi. Naingay ang first part. Sorry. Ano hindi po dok? Uh, baka may nakabukas lang po na ano? Uh, uh, na pang screen kanina. Pero check ko na lang po ulit para sure. Yeah. Oh. So when I was testing, alam ko wala eh. Opo, yun nga po eh. Okay po. Do I have to put mic or is my sound clear na kanina? Okay, so, clear naman po. Clear okay. naman po. I don't have to put mic.
Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Angelica Daf Mangya, Ethical Marketing Manager of EI Skin Laboratories, Inc. We are so delighted to have you all here once again for another insightful webinar event. But before we start, let me remind everyone about your rules of engagement. For optimal viewing experience, all attendees will automatically be muted to minimize background noise and distraction. We encourage the participation of our attendees throughout the lecture. You may submit your questions through the Q&A icon at the bottom of the screen. Our team will collect and address them during the Q&A session. In case an attendee needs to slip away for a while, do not leave the meeting as re-entering is not allowed. We kindly ask you to fill out the evaluation forms will be provided at the end of the event. Kamedis giveaways will be distributed to the attendees after finishing the event and completing the evaluation form. Now, let me turn you over to Cherie Eaton, our Global Marketing Manager for Kamedis. Cherie? Uh, so, uh, hi, everyone. Um, okay, I'm sorry. I uh, <laughs> The video is not working for me. So, hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today on behalf of Kamedis. My name is Shiri. I'm the Global Marketing Director at Kamedis. And I'm very honored and would like to introduce our first speaker today, Dr. Blossom Tan Chan. We are very honored to have her here with us today. Dr. Chan is a board certified dermatologist by the Philippine Board of Dermatology. He is an active member on, of the Board of Directions of Philippine Dermatological Society. Uh, Dr. Blossom was part of the dermatologist team who conducted and managed the clinical study for Comedis AC Clear line. And today she will share her knowledge on the beneficial effects of botanicals on skin inflammation. So uh, uh, Dr. Blossom, the stage is yours. Enjoy. Thank you, Sherry. Do you hear me? No. Yes. All right. Loud and clear, Doc. Loud and clear. All right. Okay. Um, my video is still closed. Okay. Anyway, uh, thank you, Sherry, for your kind introduction. Uh, I have decided to uh, pre-record my lecture to ensure the smooth flow. I would like to um, invite I'd like to welcome all attendees uh, from Manila, Taiwan, and Thailand. So I hope you can sit back, enjoy my lecture, and learn something new and something cool. Okay. Hi. 2021 prediction says we're going more for vegetarian menu, such as Burger King launches its plant-based Whopper. Shakey's introduces the good burger. And the bad burger. Make your choice at Shakey's. And yes, Shakey's is not behind. And we are making more healthier lifestyle choices by consuming more nutritious food, such as your naturally fermented kimchi, kombucha, yogurt, and sardau. And these are all rich in probiotics and high in prebiotics. Filipinos continue to turn to plants to cope with this lockdown. Good day. I am Dr. Blossom Tian Chan. sharing with you the power of botanicals, the benefits on skin inflammation, and more. This is my disclosure, and I hold no financial interest in any of the companies. So, as we focus more into this um, ginger and all these fermented foods, all these immune boosters contain natural products of botanicals with antimicrobial and immunomodulating potential, such as your isoflavonoids, phytosterols, indoles, alkaloids, tannin, among others. And this contain the immunomodulatory effects, such as your cytokine secretion, histamine release, phagocytosis, immunoglobulin secretion. 
So, such as in our basic wound healing, your cytokines interleukin 4 and 13 will take part in your wound repair. And your immune cells and keratinocytes produce this interleukin 17 A, TNF alpha that leads to the dysregulated proliferation and differentiation seen in psoriasis. For our number one acne, we have our increased interleukin 1 alpha, interleukin 6 and 8, TNF alpha that leads to the formation of your microcomedal, and this we know is the precursor of them all. And for our busy pathway of your atopic dermatitis, you have your interleukin 4 and 13 produced by your T helper 2 cells, either in your acute or your chronic stage. So you can see all these inflammatory cells due to either their inefficient regulation or resolution of their inflammatory response and add on to the poor clearing of pathogen leads to this chronic inflammation and non-specific non, uh, destruction of tissue. So inflammation and immune system is intimately tied and inflammation leads to your immune dysfunction. Our host immunity influences the skin microbiota and conversely, the skin microbiota in part modulates cutaneous immunity. So if inflammation can lead to immune dysfunction and our host immunity can influence our skin microbiota, conversely, skin microbiota modulates your cutaneous immunity, therefore your skin microbiota can also modulate our inflammatory process. The study of the impact of microbes and their gene products in human health and disease is what we call the human microbiome. And these are made up of your bacteria, viruses, fungi, and proteins. And their distribution varies according to their specific microenvironment, which are your sebaceous rich areas, moist, and your dry. So for your sebaceous uh, area, which is the low, lowest bacterial diversity due to its anaerobe lipid rich environment, you have your cutie bacterium that's the most predominant. For your moist, you have your corny bacterium and your staphylococcus. And for your dry, which has the most diverse microbial community, you have your beta proteobacteria. Majority of our skin microbes are commensals, which are your non-pathogenic, permanent, or your temporary residents. And due to the dysbiosis and or imbalance, genetic variation, and immune status, this can drive the transition from commensal to pathogens. And in these pathogenic interactions, only the microbe will benefit while the host is eventually harmed. Microbiome is important as it contributes to genetic diversity. It also influences metabolic processes, such as sea acne metabolizing sebum triglyceride releasing free fatty acid. It also is essential for immunity as some commensal microbiota was found to induce expression of complement genes. This microbiome can also modulate disease by suppressing inflammation, stimulating the immune system, and secreting antimicrobial agents to inhibit certain pathogenic bacterial strains. Diversity can be advantageous to our ecosystem because low diversity has been associated with some dysbiotic skin disorders such as our atopic dermatitis. So this diversity and richness is shown to decrease significantly when our complement system is blocked. Now, the highest potential microbiome to control acne are your Staphylococcus epidermidis, Streptococcus thermophilus, Lactis fecalis, and your Lactobacillus. For your atopic, you have the above. Now, to define the living microorganisms that confer a health benefit on the host when they are administered in adequate amounts is your probiotic. And your prebiotic are the substrates that to encourages the growth of the beneficial bacteria. 
So example of your probiotic that's uh, greatly used in acne is your Streptococcus thermophilus, which is shown to increase the production of ceramides such as your phytosphingosine. And this is shown to have both antimicrobial against C. acne and anti-inflammatory. Another is your lactobacilli, producing free fatty acid and conjugated linoleic acid, which are your acidic molecules, thus lowering your skin pH. It also produces your enzymatic antioxidant superoxide dismutase, thus offering protection against your peroxide-free radicals. Staphylococcus epidermidis is also found to prevent acne and exerts antimicrobial activity. So your staph epidermidis can release your succinate acid, which has an anti acne effect. And it can also produce toxin, which inhibits your C-acne growth. Staph epidermidis can generate this lipotechoic acid, your LTA, which dampens your C-acne-related immunity by blocking your toll-like receptor 2 expression in your keratinocyte. It undergoes glycerol fermentation, which is actually the backbone of your sebum triglyceride. And this is found to be a natural skin defense against your acne and an overgrowth inhibitor as well. So these are the following probiotic bacteria used in atopic dermatitis. You have your lactobacillus, bifidobacterium, and saccharomyces. So lactobacillus in your bifidobacterium is shown to inhibit your T healthy two cell response. Thus, your interleukin 4, 5, and 13 are no longer released. And in also um, cutting the attachment of your mast cells as well as your each response that follows. So let's go to what's up now. Worldwide incidence of atopic dermatitis as one of our most common eczemas varies from 4 to 14 percent. Well, according to our health information uh, system, data from 2015 to 2019, and if you take out all the infectious conditions such as your scabies and dermatophytes, we have your irritant contact dermatitis, psoriasis, lichen simplex chronicus, allergic contact dermatitis, atopic derm, subderm, and your acne vulgaris. So what is common among these top seven diseases? They are basically inflammatory in uh, nature. And so they are characterized by its chronicity and recurrence. And if we stick to our reactive treatment of giving, especially all these steroids in this COVID uh, teleconsult, we expect the disease to flare every now and then. And knowing all the adverse effects of the long-term use of our corticosteroid therapy, we look forward to what is an ideal proactive treatment to, um, that can be safely used for long, especially for the mild and moderate cases. And the longer we use it, we can even cut the disease flares. So here comes the complementary and alternative medicine, the fervent interests of which are due to its perceived safety. Because many believe that if a product can be safely ingested, it is also safe for topical application. And since these organisms thrive in constant direct ultraviolet, it makes them very strong in antioxidants. So for your atopic, you have your glyceriza and some traditional Chinese medicines which appear to be promising. And for your acne, we have your mahonia, tea tree oil, and saccharomyces, which have potential to become standard treatments. However, many more controlled clinical studies are needed to determine the efficacy and risk of these plant-derived products. Safety aspects, especially related to sensitization and photodermatitis, have to be taken into account. Therefore, as responsible clinicians, we should not only be informed of the beneficial effects, but also the specific adverse effects these botanicals are used for these dermatologic disorders and cosmetic purposes.
It's still locked down, so let's have a brief review of your Lianhua. According to the National Medical Products Administration of China, this Lianhua is used for the treatment of the novel coronavirus pneumonia, especially for the fever, cough, and fatigue symptoms. And they are made for the, uh, made up of these 11 ingredients. The key ingredient is your forsythia and your honeysuckle. These uh, trials have shown that it can improve the symptoms and shorten the course of your COVID-19. However, given the small number of documents included and the low quality, efficacy and safety of this Lianhua shall be confirmed by more high quality clinical study. Therefore, it still lacks evidence-based exploration. Locally in Manila, it is not approved as a COVID medicine, but as a traditional medicine. And not even traditional Chinese medicine practitioners would prescribe this Lianhua for asymptomatic patients, and definitely it is not for prevention. It is also not recommended for hypertensive patients. So Lianhua capsule has better therapeutic effect on the viral influenza, but the incidence of adverse reaction is high and its safety must be taken seriously. We had a very recent webinar on Lianhua, care of our um, Dr. Philip Tangati, who is a traditional Chinese uh, medicine practitioner. This was uh, courtesy of our East Avenue Medical Center webcon. And he explained that these Chinese herbal formulas uh, are seldom used alone. So you have your chief herb, which will take, uh, which has the main action, the deputy herb to enhance or counter the effects, the assistant herb to mediate the side effects, and the envoy herb, which is to lead to desired effect, areas of effect. So if um, the patient is asymptomatic and um, he takes this Lianhua capsule, so there's a very big chance that he can be experiencing the effects of the assistant or the deputy herb, which would lead to the side effects such as your diarrhea. Okay, so uh, we had uh, in our last convention, uh, Dr. Trisha Manlongat explaining the importance of your antioxidant in our functional dermatology. And this is actually one of our upcoming uh, interest group. So I think it's good to tickle our brains on what act actually these antioxidants are and how it acts as our anti-inflammatory mechanism. Our ultraviolet exposure, pollution, cigarette smokes, plus our normal metabolism, including our respiration, we release reactive oxygen species. And in our hypoxic state, we release our reactive nitrogen species. And that includes your nitric oxide. For our ROS, we have your hydrogen peroxide and your singlet oxygen. And your free radicals will include your superoxide free radical and your lipid peroxides. So a free radical is a molecule that carries one or more unpaired electrons. And being odd in number, it makes them short-lived, highly reactive, and unstable. Therefore, they have to steal their electrons from the healthy neighboring molecule. So what happens? The attack molecule then become another free radical. And this uh, will start a chain of reaction causing more damage to our living cells. So with the release of this uh, ROS, your antioxidants come into play. You have your enzymatic, which, has, which are your glutathione peroxidase and your superoxide dismutase. And for your non-enzymatic, you have your estradiol, melatonin, and your vitamins E and C, among the others. These antioxidants are the happy donors. They neutralize the free radicals by giving up some of their electrons. And in doing so, they naturally switch off this free radical formation. And thus, it breaks a chain reaction that can affect other molecules in our body. Balance of these antioxidant systems and the endogenous generation of the ROS is dynamic and tenuous. When our ROS formation exceeds more than what our antioxidants can cope, then oxidative stress will set in. 
this oxidative stress can cause tissue injury and inflammation, attacking our lipids and proteins, and this will lead to cell damage and death. It also changes our proliferative and immune response. And in its chronic course, the inflammatory cells will generate more soluble inflammatory mediators. It will also release more reactive oxygen species. And as you can see, more ROS will then lead to additional oxidative stress to the body. So what to do with this stress? By taking in more antioxidant to catch the cascade of this free radical formation. And no worries about this antioxidant. They have a very efficient way of regenerating themselves. So let's go to when it blooms and more. So you have your portulaca. And uh, portulaca contains her flavonoids, alkaloids, terpenoids, and is known to possess this antimicrobial and anti-inflammatory. Your alaracimin is uh, found to have this anti-inflammatory effect. And uh, this uh, alaracimin uh, has shown, uh, shown to decrease the secretion of your interleukin-6 and your TNF-alpha, as well as inhibiting your nitric oxide, which is in the pathway of your inflammatory process. This is a very uh, interesting study, though I know it's really a very uh, small group of 11 uh, patients with self-controlled study. And what they did was that they did portulaca extract in the morning with your calcipotriol at night versus the monotherapy of your calcipotriol with a brand name Digonex here you apply twice daily. And it showed that in terms of the proliferation of your keratinocyte markers, such as your cytokeratine, K10, filigreen, the combination arm shows a significant down regulation versus your monotherapy. In terms of your inflammatory markers, your TNF-alpha and interleukin-8 has a higher reversion efficiency, and your nuclear factor kappa-beta has also significantly decreased versus your monotherapy arm. So it shows the combination of your portulaca with your calcipotriol can decrease the adverse effect, reduce your transepidermal water loss, and potently reverse your keratinocyte differentiation dysfunction. So this is just a very interesting idea that it's um, worth trying. Your next um, extract is your rhubarb, which they found your emodine as the anti-inflammatory key ingredient. And emodin is found to inhibit your COX-2 protein. So COX-2 is the one responsible in converting your fatty acid to your prostaglandin E2, which is a pro-inflammatory mediator. It has photoprotective and antioxidant effects as shown by its inhibitory action on tyrosinase and tyrosine kinase activity. The red box shows the significant effect of your rhubarb extract versus your positive control of kojic acid on the levels of alpha melanocyte stimulating hormone. Another very interesting botanical, which is one of my favorite, is your chrysanthemum. It's such a cool tea. And I'm happy to know that it has, it's very rich in your flavonoids, phenolic acids, and terpenoids. And it's also known for its anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, and antipathogenic effects. So they found out that it's chrysanol that has the anti-inflammatory component, which shows a high inhibition of your nitric oxide production. It also decreases your COX-2 and your INOS protein, which are all your uh, anti-inflammatory uh, indicators, as well as it inhibits your TNF-alpha secretion. So you can see individually, these botanical herb extracts have shown very potent anti-inflammatory and antioxidative action. But you know, synergistically, the combination of these six plant extracts, I'll call it as a clear complex, can decrease the secretion of your pro-inflammatory mediators, such as your interleukin-8, with a comparable 75% inhibition. For your TNF-alpha, it shows an 80% inhibition versus your 92% inhibition on your positive control of dexamethasone. And for your 
interleukin-1 alpha, it shows 56% inhibition versus 100% for your positive control. So overall, all these um, pro-inflammatory mediators show a comparable uh, anti-inflammatory effect to your positive control, but definitely a better anti-inflammatory effect versus your vehicle. In another experiment done on your natural skin, this clear complex also showed the decreased secretion of your prostaglandin E2 with the same of 100% inhibition, same as your positive control. And for your interleukin-8, it even showed 100% inhibition versus a 41% inhibition of your positive control. Antioxidant-wise, the level shows that at 10 or 20 percent uh, concentration, it has a 100 percent antioxidative effect. So aside from the anti-inflammatory and your antioxidative, these uh, botanical herb extracts also have also shown an inhibitory effect on your growth of your C acne, and also it inhibits the growth of your Staphylococcus capitis. And this is the antibiotic effect of the following herb extracts, your scotillaria, philodendron, rum palmatum, that's your rhubarb, and your sanguisorba on your cutibacterium acne. And this is shown via your agar diffusion assay and your microplate dilution assay. Aside from its inhibitory effect on the growth of your C acne and your staph capitis, it has also shown to promote growth of your staph epidermitis. So remember this slide that staph epidermidis can prevent acne and it can exert its antimicrobial activity. And, and this uh, shows the dual action. Doubling the um, concentration of your chrysanthemum and your rhubarb has no ad uh, additional benefit in terms of its uh, an, uh, antibiotic effect against your staph and your uh, prebiotic effect for your staph epidermidis. This is the clinical trial done uh, initially by Dr. Zoe Drelos, uh, done on 25 subjects for a 10-day study. And I'd like to share with you briefly, this is the locally made study, um, a single-blinded randomized controlled trial on the efficacy and safety of this acne treatment kit on our Filipino subjects with mild acne vulgaris. And we did it on 60 subjects. Uh, it's a single-blinded randomized trial for a study period of 28 days. And you can see that for the inflammatory lesions, the elevation and the erythema improvement um, showed as early as day three, which is comparable to the result of Dr. Zoe Drelos that showed day three as the beginning um, effect. And of course, the effect continues to improve from day seven, 14, and 28 onwards versus the untreated site or the control. And for the lesion count, the non-inflammatory lesion also showed significant result day seven onwards. But for your inflammatory lesions, just like your other regular um, anti-acne medication, it will take at least two weeks to see the improvement in terms of your lesion count. But as you can compare it with the red graph, which is your control or the untreated site, it's still a significant improvement. This is one of our subjects showing the improvement in 28 days. And this is our visha, which shows the porphyrin feature count, which are actually your bacterial excretion lodged in the pores, and seen here as the yellow dots. So to, on my right, you will see the day 28, which is a lower feature count, and you will see the lower yellow dots as well. So, if you have your clear complex uh, combination, you have your calm complex combination, which we have your additional glyceriza, alanthus, and senedium. And similar to your clear complex, it is shown to decrease the secretion of your pro-inflammatory mediators, such as your interleukin-8, which has 68% inhibition, and a 90% inhibition on your prostaglandin E2 versus your vehicle. 
and um, it's also a synergistic effect on the inflammatory inflammatory marker of your prostaglandin E2. You can see that the combination of your sangisorba and your alanthus would show a significant reduction of your prostaglandin E2 level versus its individual extract. Same with the anti-allergic effect, your histamine level is significantly reduced with the combination extract versus the individual. And the prebiotic effect on your staph epidermidis, you can see that there is uh, uh, the growth of staph epidermidis is uh, more versus your control. And the antibiotic effect on your staff are used. So you have the green bar for your sangisorba and the blue bar for your alanthus, which has a significant reduction of your staff are used. Your black graph there is your control. So remember, diversity is important because if you have um, increased staff are used, it's usually uh, relatively more abundant during the AD flares. This is the validation paper of the botanical calm complex for our mild to moderate atopic dermatitis done by Dr. Zoe Dreylos and Dr. Kerchik et al. And this was actually presented in the 2019 World Congress in, of Dermatology in Milan, which is a multi-center done on 108 subjects with mild to moderate AD. And you can see that Week one, the comparator, comparator really had a good start, but week two onwards, you can see that there's a significant improvement in terms of your body surface area. And this is one of their subjects showing the improvement. So all these um, botanicals extracts have shown anti-inflammatory activity even at a very low concentration of 0 0.0002. It has shown to significantly inhibit the release of your pro-inflammatory mediators such as your um, TNF-alpha. Uh, for your interleukin-6 and your prostaglandin E2, it has a range of a 20 to 60 percent inhibition. And also for your antioxidative activity, the extract even at 0.1% would show a range of your 22 to 100% inhibition of your uh, oxidative activity. Aside from your clear and your calm complex, we have your SIBO and your SO complex. And this is one of the papers done for the treatment of your septum. And you can see that the improvement of the severity score in terms of the erythema and scaling uh, showed um, already by week two, and it continued to improve until week eight. So this is one of my favorite subjects because he is my handsome son, except for his septum. And uh, you can see in less than, actually it's less than one week, there was a clearing of his erythema and scaling. And you can see versus the untreated side, there was a persistent of the erythema. That's the red arrow pointing. This is another paper done on the scalp septum and the dandruff therapy, and also showing the improvement of the erythema and the loose flaking index. So with all these um, botanical extracts, individually or in combination, we can see their synergistic anti-inflammatory action is a power puff against all these pro-inflammatory mediators. These botanical extracts also show anti-allergic, anti-itch, antimicrobial, and antioxidative properties. COVID or no COVID, our chronic skin problems are here to stay with our patients. So as we study and realize more the vicious cycle linking the inflammation to immunity, to microbiome and antioxidant system. Therefore, if we can offer an effective non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication, which can be safely used anytime and day, and with an add-on benefits of its topical prebiotic, which can help restore dysbiosis and oxidative stress. Then, restoring our well-balanced microbiome and our antioxidant system will give us a healthy us. These are my references.
So thank you for your kind attention. It's me, Awesome Blossom, and this is Staffy Epi saying hello to everyone. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Blossom, uh, for that wonderful presentation. Indeed, humans' relationship with botanicals is very long-standing. Given these research-backed benefits of botanicals, it's no surprise that these plant-based ingredients are used throughout the body and skincare products in the modern world. Now we are opening the floor for a Q&A that will be answered by our speaker, of course, Dr. Blossom, together with Dr. Yonit, our CEO and head of R&D, and of course, the beautiful Jali Serem, Senior Director of Sales and Business Development. Let me first uh, look into our chat box for questions that came in earlier. The first question came from uh, Dr. Gio Di Mayuga. Are these products also considered probiotics? Okay, um, thank you, Gio. Can, can you hear me, Daphne? Loud and clear, though. All right. Thank you, Gio, for that uh, good question. All right, so um, if we review the definition, um, your probiotics are these living microorganisms. So we consider this stuff epi as the probiotic, but what we have here is this botanical extract that's present in this product then serves as a prebiotic because they encourages the growth of the probiotic. So I hope I answered your question. Okay. Next question, Doc, uh, from an anonymous attendee. Are the products safe for use by pregnant and lactating women? Okay, I think we have Dr. Yoni to answer that question. Dr. Yoni, you're in mute. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Hello to everybody. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you very much to Dr. Blossom about this amazing, uh, interesting presentation. It was a comprehensive overview on the mechanism of self-action and uh, uh, bot botanicals. Uh, and to the question, um, we, are, uh, uh, we don't have any data, clinical data about uh, pregnant and lactate lactating uh, women. Uh, we don't know also any harmful or probably prob 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 uh, harmful effects of uh, the ingredients in our products on this women. However, uh, we cannot claim that because we don't, uh, we did not do the study. So uh, uh, I, su I suggest to uh, to have uh, an appointment with the doctors and uh, uh, to consult at, uh, about uh, using our products in uh, pregnant and lactating women. Okay, I think Dr. Yonit already answered the question precisely. The next question will be, are there any contraindications for the use of botanicals in children for atopic dermatitis? Um, okay, uh, okay. Uh, there are not any contraindications for the use of botanicals for children. It's not only, con no, not any, uh, there's no contraindications. It's uh, it designed for uh, actually for uh, uh, children from uh, six months and uh, higher, uh, and uh, because, because atopic dermatitis is mainly uh, appears uh, in uh, children and babies and children, so no, no contraindications. <laughs> okay, we have a question from Doctora Bernadette Arcelia. Are there other studies versus other pro-inflammation mediators aside from IL six and TNF? Uh, of course, we did uh, additional uh, uh, additional uh, uh, pro-inflammatory uh, cytokines. For example, uh, we also checked uh, IL-8 and IL-1 alpha. Uh, it depends on the questions we asked. And uh, I just uh, wanted to say that uh, uh, all our botanicals, where we uh, screened all our, our extracts for all kinds of pro-inflammatory agents and all of them, they have different levels of uh, this activity. But uh, yes, we, we, we tested additional molecules as well. Okay, Doc. Um, another question from 
Dr. Lilia Santiago, what is the incidence of allergic contact dermatitis from these products? This from okay. Can I answer? The, yes, yeah. sure. You can okay. answer. Clinically, uh, <laughs> since this is botanical, so there's always, as I mentioned in the earlier slides, that you always have to advise the patient for the possible phytodermatitis. But usually, what I tell the patient is to test it on one small spot to make sure that they don't, uh, you know, apply the whole area and then they get inflamed the whole face. But so far, with my experience of using some of these products, like my favorite is the for the Sebderm, as you know, it's one of our chronic and top cases now since it's summer. I haven't really encountered any reaction, but I had one patient who reacted to the saw scalp, but she was reacting to also other, I tried her on sun cream basils. She was also reactive. So I don't know if she reacted to the ingredient or she was just generally more sensitive to some, uh, to this uh, botanical. But uh, so far uh, patients have been coming back and they, they like it since, and I feel confident that, you know, uh, I won't get those flares from the steroids. So it's safer. Uh, I feel more at ease that patients can just use anytime they feel uh, they're, it's about to come out. So my incidence is relatively very, very low. Maybe I can count with less than my five fingers. Okay. I, I, I just can add that uh, we have the low incidence uh, uh, globally, not, uh, not only uh, in, in this area. So uh, we have a very, an excellent res results and very small incidence of any kind of allergic reactions. Okay, thank you, Dr. Lilia Santiago for your very nice question. I'm very happy you attended. She's one of my favorite consultants. <laughs> there is another question came in, Doc. Uh, are there any safety studies done? Any incidents of allergic contact dermatitis to some of the botanical products? So generally, I think I didn't know there is this botanical safety handbook. So similar to our drugs, they have this classification of, you know, um, category one, it's safe for general, category two with restrictions, three is uh, under supervision, and four is no safety data done. So uh, if we have that in the drugs, they also have it in the botanicals. And so far, I think especially for some glyceriza and some more commonly used botanicals. So I think there are more on the category one. That's why we have a lot of this uh, cosmeceutical or over-the-counter using these kinds of botanical like your tea tree and your glyceriza. So I'm sure you know some of our, uh, what we have been using for the past five years that contain also these kinds of botanicals. I, I would like to add also, uh, for example, for chrysanthemum, but uh, it's not only, we have our spe special uh, extraction process. During this process, we remove most of the, or almost, we have almost none of the proteins, which are usually our, our allergenic. So uh, that's why it's not uh, the same, just like, you know, to smell the flower. Uh, we have an extract. We have, we have purified extract, which uh, uh, is uh, much less allergenic or, or none at all. Uh, we, uh, the, actually, we do have, uh, we did test uh, uh, HRPT for repeated, uh, repeated uh, hypoallergenic tests, and we did not find any allergenic uh, reactions. So yes, they are very safe. Okay, another question from Dr. Esmer Gonzalez. Can they be used concurrently with topical anti-acne med medicines? Yes, okay, um, definitely yes, you can use it because uh, since um, it has shown to have very strong anti-inflammatory, uh, I would usually combine it, especially um, for some patients who are sensitive to our retinoids. Of course, first line is our retinoids, but if it's for mild to moderate, and especially if the patient is young, then maybe we can try like what we did in the study uh, with this, um, with the spot treatment kit or the acne treatment kit. And uh, if it's not enough, then you can always add onto your retinoid. So sometimes what I do is you can do alternate like MWF, you can start with the milder one and PPHS, you can do the retinoids. And even for some moderate to severe, 
you can do the strong one like your retinoid BPO at night, then you can add this in the morning because what we're after is the anti-inflammatory action. And uh, as we can see that aside from its anti-inflammatory, it also promotes the growth of your other stuff epidermis, which has added action against our C acne too. So you can always mix and match. And um, since this is not very irritating, so it's a very good way to combine um, this with our ant other anti-acne medications. Okay. Uh, another question is, uh, which sever se severity of acne would that Hamedis acne can be most beneficial? Can this be used with other actives such as retinoids or as a standalone treatment? Thank you. I think I partially answered. So it will be best for mild to moderate, but you can always add on because of its strong anti-inflammatory and at the same time use it as their, um, to soothe the irritation since this is not really an irritating ingredient. Okay. Another question, how long will you use the product if you see the skin problem is not improving? So an anonymous. It, yeah. Okay, so usually like any other condition, you can give it at least two to four weeks. So it depends for acne or your AD. Uh, for acne, maybe a month. Usually we give them like two to four weeks and decide if you're improving, if you need to add on or you need to go for your oral. So you always have to assess our patients every two to four weeks. So you can always ask your patient to send in the picture and assess. And also you have to check how they're applying it. So because sometimes, you know, as we know that acne is an inflammatory condition, if they will just be putting on the spot and wait for it to pop and then apply, definitely that's not the right way. So you just don't just, you cannot just conclude that it's the medicine. We always have to dig deeper. So check all the details. How are they using it? Are they just, do they apply thinly all over? Because remember microcomedones, you don't see it, but that is the precursor. So to catch all these microcomedones, we have to apply thinly all over. Definitely you can use it first where it's more inflamed, but it's best to apply thinly all over to catch all these seeds of microcomedone and then give it like two to four to six weeks. And you can you really see if the medicine is working to, to stop the inflammation. Then if you stop, you reduce the inflammation, then everything follows. If you don't microcomo, then they don't lead to more comedone and other lesions to follow. So always have to check all the details with the patient. Don't blink the medicine immediately, okay? Because they'll say, no, it's not, no, it's not, I'm burning, and no, they're just not doing it correctly. So we have to spend more time talking to the patient and check how they're doing. Another question came in. Would it help Rosacea from Dr. Bernadette Arcelia? <laughs> so far, there was no, there is no study yet, but I think it's worth trying like uh, for the redness because uh, I think one of the slides which I was not able to emphasize was that because of its anti-inflammatory and antioxidant, uh, you showed some like it has an anti-redness for the Sebo, uh, for the clear complex, doctor, uh, right, Dr. Yonit? Remember one of your slides? But it was too many info, so I didn't add any more. But you have one slide there that shows anti-redness. Uh, I can uh, just say that uh, we do have, uh, there are a few customers that also uh, ask us about, about that. And uh, we, we didn't do any clinical uh, uh, studies, so we recommended to use a calming lotion from Topic Line and uh, it worked. <laughs> so probably we need to, to consider to run a clinical trial to, to be sure that uh, these products with all uh, this anti-redness, anti-inflammatory properties, uh, it uh, will work on this uh, condition. But uh, yes, we do have some uh, case studies about that. Okay. This is a different question. I think this question wanted to address Jale. Do you find that marketing-wise, a certain subset of patients are more likely to choose botanicals-based products? Interested to find out, especially in the Philippines. I think Jale is the best person to answer this. Do you want me to, Jale? Or... Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much for this question. And it really explains why we exist. Uh, because today people are more and more open to try botanicals, uh, actually instead of like generic drugs uh, to solve the problems of skin conditions and not only skin conditions, it goes in a, any field of medicine today, also in a nutrition. 
And uh, our clinical studies are showing that many of our products are as strong as steroids and uh, sometimes other drugs. So we are definitely very sure and confident with what we are offering. And uh, just to explain, we are not a completely organic brand. We are a natural based, botanical based brand, and we are combining different botanicals with Western ingredients in order to leverage the efficacy of our products. So we do use salicylic acid, zinc perithion, shea butter, and uh, other well-known ingredients together with the botanicals to maximize the efficacy. So it, it explains uh, the success behind the formulas and the clinical studies. Okay, I think we still have two minutes, last two minutes to answer the four other questions. Uh, can you use the PSO kit for cradle cap? So I'm sorry, Daphne, can you repeat that? Can you use the PSO kit for cradle cap? Dr. Yoni, can you answer yes, that? One? Yes, yes, sure. Uh, uh, yes, not the whole kit. Uh, I would not uh, use the shampoo, but uh, definitely scalp lotion. It is designed for cradle cap as well uh, for six months and higher. Uh, and uh, it, uh, it, it works just uh, as it works for every kind of seborrheic dermatitis. Cuddle cap is seborrheic dermatitis, actually. Okay, last three questions. Will this beneficial? Uh, will this benefit comedonal acne? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, for comedonal, that's your mild acne because I think, uh, Jolly, correct me if I'm wrong. Your sebel, uh, your spot has the salicylic, right? So I right. think, yeah, then that includes with your anti-inflammatory. So uh, maybe that, that will help because remember, comedones start from all steel and infl infl inflammation that will lead to your microcomedone, to your comedone. So I think it's worth trying, especially for sensitive skin. Okay, last two question. Can this be used by children? What is the minimum age? So uh, is, that pertains to which product for acne, then uh, I think that's definitely safe because it's not very irritating. For your atopic, Dr. Yonit said that uh, yeah, as young as two years old, that's what uh, they have tried. So definitely that's a very safe uh, product to try for kids. But we do have a permission and a safety assessment from six months and higher. So uh, it, is, uh, it is safe for six months and high, and we have a lot of customers that uh, use on babies. Okay. Okay, last question. Last is it more important to have something labeled as organic than just natural? Jale, that's for you. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's a philosophy. Uh, it's a different marketing strategy. We are not in the organic path because we are in the path of therapy. And our most important mission is to bring relief to uh, symptoms of chronic skin conditions. Therefore, we find the efficacy when we combine uh, organic or natural ingredients together with Western ingredients, some synthetic ingredients. And this is the focus of Kamedis. This is why we are not an organic brand, but we are a brand that is based in natural, combining together with other ingredients. I, I okay. just wanted to add about that. About that. Uh, actually, there is a trend, uh, globally trend, uh, not uh, to use uh, org organic because uh, when people uh, created the organic uh, list of ingredients, they uh, understood, they realized that actually there are not too many ingredients to work with. So the products not always are of the best efficacy because you, know, you have two. Uh, few ingredients to, to in this list, but uh, there, there is a trend for natural and natural uh, derived uh, ingredients, which we have a lot of them. So uh, there, there, there is a change of conceptions about uh, the organic and the natural. Natural and natural derived, this is the direction. <laughs> okay. I think that concludes our Q&A segment. So for the next round, we'll have a pop quiz. I think everyone is very um, familiar about this game. So to ensure that everyone was able to grasp what we have discussed, our next segment will be, like what I've said, pop quiz. Mechanics for this game will be number one, 
Our speaker will ask four questions and we'll have three winners per question. Let me repeat. Our speaker will ask four questions and we will have three winners per question. Number two, the 15 seconds timer will start right after the question. When the time is up, you will hear this bell. First three correct answers that will come in from our chat box will be declared as winners. All winners will be announced live and through our chat box also. All winners will receive an AC breakout kit individually. Individual kit, individual kit. Kamedis AC kit contains up the following AC Clear Face Cream, AC Face Cleanser, and AC Clear Spot Treatment. So let's begin. All right. So the first, first question is Which of the following probiotics can prevent your C acne growth? It has anti C acne or antimicrobial effect via the toxins release, and it also exhibits your anti inflammatory via your, via your toll like receptor blocking. A. Lactobacillus, B. Streptococcus thermophilus, C. Staphylococcus epidermidis, D. Streptococcus salivarius. Well, eleven. Uh, uh, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, the answer is C, Staphylococcus epidermidis. So okay, the, the winners. Yeah, we have the winners, uh, Dr. Michelle, Dr. Ressa Martinez, and uh, Dr. Rea. So proceed to the next question. Okay, the next question is the synergistic combination of the clear and the calm botanical extract has shown to promote the growth of your staph epidermidis. Therefore, these extracts are called A, probiotic, B, prebiotic, C, postbiotic, or D, parabiotic. All right. Six, five, four, three. Okay. And the answer is prebiotic. So prebiotic, um, this extract serves as prebiotic because it encourages the growth of these microorganisms. So the microorganisms are the probiotic. So this extract do not contain this uh, stop epi. It encourages the growth, right? Okay, so our winner, yeah, our winners are, let me collate it first off. Thank you to all for answering. I'm very happy. Most uh, no, are really listening, but this is really something worth learning. Okay, the winners are Dr. Patricia Torres, Dr. Lourdes de Brida, Dr. Marie Zulayer. All right, congrats, Let's doctors. <laughs> Let's proceed okay. to the third. So, second to the last. The synergistic combination of the clear botanical extracts has shown to have strong anti inflammatory and antioxidant action. Furthermore, it has antibiotic effect against your staph epidermidis, B, Streptococcus thermophilus, C, staph Staphylococcus aureus, D, Streptococcus salivarius. So this is antibiotic effect against what? All right. The answer is antibiotic effect against your staff are used. Okay. So okay, let me out. collate again all the winners. Okay, our winners are Dr. Justine Calderon, Dr. Francesca Yulo, and Dr. Aileen Montero. Wow. Eileen made it. 
her fingers are still fast. <laughs> I usually don't get into the magic tree. <laughs> okay, our last question before we end. Okay, the synergistic combination of the calm botanical complex has shown to have also strong anti-inflammatory and antioxidant action. And it has a prebiotic effect against your A, staph epidermidis, B, streptococcus thermophilus, C, staph aureus, D, strep salivarius. So this is prebiotic effect against your switch one, staph epidermidis or the rest. So the okay. answer is prebiotic to staph epidermidis. All right, remember it's prebiotic. Okay. Let's take a late again first for the winners. Okay, our winners are Dr. Marian Mann. Dr. Nicole Tan, and Dr. Janelle, yes. Congratulations. Congratulations to all. Thank you for listening. Okay. Okay, I think that concludes our talk based event. So let me turn you over to Jale Siren, our Canada Senior Director of Sales and Business Development. Jale. Okay, thank you so much. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. And thank you so much for being here and spending time and investing in uh, learning about botanicals, inflammation, about safe and effective uh, treatment uh, options. And uh, I wanted to give you just a small summary of Comedis because it might be that some of you are not so much familiar. Uh, Dr. Blossom, you did an amazing uh, lecture. Thank you so much for uh, giving all this information to the fellow doctors here. And uh, I just want to explain about our brand a little bit and what kind of uh, options we are offering uh, for you to help uh, patients with chronic skin conditions. Okay. Just one second. Okay. Let me... I hope my screen is uh, big enough. So we are dealing with uh, four different uh, types of uh, skin conditions. Uh, one, the blue line that you see over here, it's uh, for topic skin, for uh, atopic uh, dermatitis, and for dry skin and eczema prone skin. So we have a few products here that I'm gonna just show you. And uh, the next one, the orange one that you see is uh, for seborrhea and psoriasis. It's actually very, uh, popular in Philippines already, I know that uh, our Seboria shampoo is one of the best selling products out there, and uh, I, we are getting very good feedbacks about it. AC Clear, you just heard about it, it's for acne, blemishes, for oily prone skin, and uh, this is a great uh, solution for uh, all sorts of different acne. And uh, we have the Skin Relief Calming Lotion, it's for skin allergies and irritations and redness. Okay, so uh, about the blue line, uh, eczema is one of our best fields. We are really uh, doing a lot of studies and uh, the eczema cream, which is the face and body cream that you see over here, is a hero product in Comedis. It's a much invested product and uh, our success with the clinical studies are really amazing. So this is something that we are very much confidently uh, offering to doctors to try for their patients. And uh, we have a complementary product, the face and body wash. Face and body wash is really a product that can be used by any different type of skin. It's a very gentle cleanser. And uh, it also includes uh, some of our botanical extracts. And good news, any doctor that has attended our uh, webinar today is going to be receiving a face and body wash. And we have another gift that we are giving is uh, the new product, the new baby of Comedis, Ultra Hydration Gel. Ultra Hydration Gel is a very new product. It just came uh, around two months ago. I think it was received in uh, your markets like a few days ago. So this product is a little bit different than our face and body cream, which is the eczema product, because Ultra Hydration Gel is a water-based product. So therefore, if you have an oily skin, you can still comfortably use this uh, product 
It uh, provides probiotics, prebiotics. It's, uh, it has the effect of anti-inflammation, anti-redness, uh, giving a lot of hydration from the first moment that you are using. You can use it only once and it's going to uh, preserve the hydration for 24 hours. We are doing uh, new studies about this and we are receiving very good feedbacks already. So I'm very happy that you will have the opportunity to try it for yourself and hopefully you will like it. We would love to hear your feedbacks. And we have the food gel and hand cream also in this line of dry and eczema prone skin. Okay, uh, the orange line, uh, the Seborea line, uh, Sebo stands for Seborea. The dandruff shampoo and scalp lotion, this is the ultimate uh, global winner kit uh, for people that are going through uh, dandruff or itchy and uh, irritated scalp. This has been a very good solution. And uh, for years, I think Amelis has been known specifically with the dandruff shampoo and scalp lotion. So it's uh, definitely very much suggested to try if you are going through uh, dandruff. Actually, a lot of people that do not have dandruff, they are still using the product because of the uh, features of the botanicals. And uh, we always say healthy scalp is healthy hair. So it's uh, really for anyone. It's not only for dandruff. And uh, T-Zone Cream and T-Zone Cleanser, Dr. Uh, Blossom, you also mentioned that uh, you tried this product on your son. It was uh, very much a pleasure for us to see the effects. And uh, this is really the biggest guarantee for the Seborea product. There are not so many Seborea products out there that is really dedicated for Seborea symptoms. So we are very proud that uh, Seborea is a very good clinical study results and uh, we are confidently offering this product for uh, people with seborrhea. And uh, psoriasis, uh, another well-known uh, line of comedies uh, for uh, psoriasis, we have a shampoo, again, the scalp lotion that works both on seborrhea and psoriasis, and we have the psoriasis body cream, so body cream. Uh, there are not too many OTC solutions out there for psoriasis. As you all know, it's a very tough condition. And we have received really hundreds, thousands of uh, very happy feedbacks from patients that have been suffering from psoriasis for many years. They've used steroids, but uh, unfortunately it creates a lot of side effects even in the other organs of the body. And uh, psoriasis is a super safe and super effective solution. And uh, hopefully you can try it yourself. And uh, AC Clear, the acne line, super popular, of course. So many of us are going through acne in our teenage years. Later, it can be uh, due to hormones. And today, with the masks that we are using all the time, uh, of course, uh, the mask ne has become a, a popular word. And uh, our uh, AC Clear line is a very gentle, yet very effective uh, line for acne prone skin. And uh, the winners of the quiz has just uh, received a gift of a breakout control kit, which includes the spot treatment, the face cream, which is a great maintenance product and the face cleanser. And we have also a new product, which is the sheet mask for uh, AC Clear. It's a very much a feel good product that is also doing a, a deep clarification, deep purification for the skin that can be used one to two times a week. And finally, the SOS product, this is probably one of the products that uh, uh, affects the fastest. It's uh, SOS because it's immediately showing effect. It's for anti-redness and it can be used even for mosquito bites, for allergy, for a uh, sunburn. So anything that is related to redness and itching, the calming lotion really calms down the skin in a matter of minutes. And uh, it's really a necessity for any household. I would uh, love to hear your feedbacks about how it works for you. So this is all. I don't want to uh, take too much of time. Hopefully in the next webinars, we are going to be continuing to giving you uh, information. I want to thank all the panelists and all the attendees for being here together with us. Dr. Blossom, thank you again for your valuable input for Comedis. And uh, we are wishing you safe, healthy days and hope to see you all in the next webinar. Thank you. And that concludes our event. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you Thank soon you again. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Bye bye. Bye. I bye. Mentioned the evaluation. They have to answer, right? Ah, right.
Yes, we have an evaluation form. Please fill it for us because the more information we can get from you, we, the more information we can give. And uh, we would love to talk about relevant things that are interesting for you. So see you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 Thank you.